Do you want to do automated mapping, photogrammetry, surveying on drones that don't have any SDK support? Drones like the Mini 4 Pro, Mavic 3 Pro, Air 3, and any future drone with waypoints. Complete hands-off mapping. And this is with a free tool I made called Waypoint Map. It's an online tool that allows you to generate the waypoint files that DJI uses to fly waypoint missions. You can load them up into your controller, all within the DJI interface. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up and use it. First, you're going to want to head over to waypointmap.com. made this really friendly for both phones and computers. So you first, you can search up an area, but it also will ask for your location to automatically place the map where you're at. You can look around, pick out an area, and then what you're going to want to do is select an area. So real quick, I'm going to select this area of this park that's nearby. We're going to pick that out and we're going to go fly it today. You want to check over and make sure that all your stuff is good to go. Um, this is all just standard stuff applied to every single position, and uh, this is the normal standard stuff that I use that's pretty solid. I want to generate this map. And as you can see, it's generated. I'll add some more shapes and some more options if people actually use this, but for now, this is just a default shape to get a general area, and I can now download the waypoint file that DJI uses. Now, depending on what kind of controller you have, there's a slightly different process for each, but here's the basic premise. Every time you create a waypoint mission, each of those points is saved in a file called a KMZ file. All you're doing is you're replacing one of the old waypoint missions KMZ file with this new updated one. And then you just go to that waypoint mission in the controller or DJI Fly app, and then you can just select it and it has all the points there for you. First up though, there is something you should do if you actually care about your waypoints missions that you currently have. You don't want to overwrite, which that's basically what we're doing is replacing this new file that we've made with a random waypoint file that you have. So if you don't want to do that, um, before we start any farther, you probably just want to fly and create a really quick dummy waypoint mission. So if I take off real quick, we're just going to fly a couple points. And so all I'm going to do is I'm just going to go over here, set a couple points on the waypoint. It really doesn't matter. I think you need to set it minimum two. And once you set it minimum two, you're good to go. This is a file that doesn't matter where these points are because ultimately we're just going to overwrite the values that are here anyway. But it's good to have that if you don't want to overwrite what you currently have. And then when you go and you look for the file, select the one that's the like newest. Um, and that way the folder with the different waypoint files, select the one that's the newest and that way you overwrite the top one. So first off, I'm just gonna go through and show you how to set this up for each different device really quickly. I promise this won't take long. There's a lot of different devices. Personally, the best one for this is the controller without the screen that hooks directly into an iPhone because you can then download this KMZ file and place it directly where it's supposed to be. So once you have your downloaded KMZ file, it will ask to download and you just wanna save this and then you wanna hit share and saved files, DJI fly. And then you just go to the Wayline Mission folder. Um, you can actually sort by date, which is what you want. And you want to make sure it's the newest stuff is first. So this was today. And all you want to do is you want to save it here. And then you want to go back to your files on my iPhone, DJI Fly, Wayline Missions. And it should save it here. All you do is you just click this, rename, copy. Delete, rename, and paste. And then you're good to go. So if you're using either the DJI RC2 or you're using an Android device with the controller without a screen, then you're basically just going to do the exact same thing right here. You're going to plug this device in. If you're using an Android device, make sure you enable the USB file transfer option. And then you want to go to your device, internal shared storage, Android, data, DJI Go V5, files, waypoint, and then you want to kind of click here on a random file and do the same process as we did with like an iPhone. Rename the file to copy the name, delete it, and then rename the file that you download, the output.kmz file, drop it in here and rename it to match. I mean, it should match the folder name. Doesn't matter which one you pick, pick the newest one since we just made a dummy waypoint flight. So if you have the DJI RC, you need to copy over that output KMZ file to an SD card. I just used the one that from the drone and you just insert that into your controller. And then on your controller, you wanna swipe down on the top left, click on your SD card, find the KMZ file wherever you put that. I put mine like right here. You wanna hit this three icons, then you wanna hit move to, 
you want to then go over here and click on the DJI RC. You want to click on Android, Data, DJI Go V5, Files, and then you want to go to Waypoint. Now I don't have any waypoints in here, but you should see a random text of numbers. Just click the newest one and basically move the file over here and then go back to that spot on the right here. And then delete the old KMZ file and then rename your new one to match. So then real quick, you can actually check to make sure everything is loaded properly. You don't even have to turn on your drone. Just go to camera view up here click on waypoints and then you want to click on the top file. You should see that it's loaded up properly. You can zoom in, take a look and make sure that everything is working as expected. Again, I'll talk about this way that this looks in a bit, but I promise that this is more than adequate and actually works really well for data capture. So let's switch over to flight. So the first thing I will tell you too, just a heads up in that regard, is when you fly your drone and when you enable this waypoint flight, uh, when you start it, it's going to take off and it's going to go up to the altitude uh, that the waypoint plan is set and then it is going to fly to the first waypoint. So that basically means if you have a very wooded area and the waypoint might be like a mile that way, you don't have to necessarily worry about it trying to go the quickest, I want to say the quickest trajectory, it won't, it won't take off, fly like a foot off the ground and then try to go forward, it will fly up and then go to like the altitude of say like 180 some feet. Uh, and then it will start going in that direction, which means that you can really, you don't really need a huge area to take off from. Um, this is a rather little opening in this very densely wooded area. And so when I go through and I select, I uh, get the drone up, have to turn on the controller, I'm good to go. So when it comes to the controller itself, all you have to do is you just go to the waypoints option. Remember we already recorded some waypoints previously, so we've overwritten that one and now the one that we previously made, well now it works here. So all we do is we load in there and if you tap on the map, you can see that you can see how the waypoints are gonna look. You'll notice, however, that the waypoints are not traditionally like you would see on maybe say, um, some of the tr more traditional softwares that do automatic mapping. And that's because there's a couple limitations on how many different points you can have. And also this setup, it's not really worth trying to load in a bunch more points because this setup actually works really well. It does get substantial overlap and at least in my testing so far, it works pretty good. I am more than happy to include an option in the future and obviously suggestions are welcome, but if you try this and you still have issues, that might be a question to raise, but I really found that this was very adequate when it came to actually mapping. So yes, it looks weird, but that's okay. So you'll notice that all the points are loaded up in there. It looks like it's good to go. You can extend this out as far as you'd like. And um, you can hit next, go, and you can take off from the drone, and the drone will then take off, and it will go straight up. So as you see here, here we go, and it's just gonna fly straight up. So it's gonna take itself up and go to that point, and adios. So now that it's flying its waypoint mission up here, there is one thing you should do, is you should enable the timed shots feature on the controller. Basically, that's uh, just under camera settings, and it has an interval. The DJI Mini 4 Pro has a five second interval, but um, basically you just hit that and then let it automatically take the pictures as you fly around. The waypoint mission itself won't actually start taking the pictures. You have to do that manually. But other than that, you can fully automate this, which is absolutely insane for a drone without SDK support. And I have, and now that we've finished up our waypoint mapping mission, I've had it set to automatically hover. Um, by default, that way we don't have, I personally don't like the return to home because it's not that great. Um, so I prefer to have it stop and it just hovers in place. And then of course, if the battery gets low, it'll just come land. So uh, that way you at least can choose to do whatever you want, navigate home, etc. And just to show you that everything works great, um, as you can see, all the cameras flew above. I generated this point cloud very easily with this automated flight plan. And to be honest with you, there's really no holes in this. It does a really good job. And I actually personally think that this format of flying, instead of just in, not in straight lines, but these curved lines, actually means you get better point cloud quality than you would with just flying in straight lines. Because this is like phenomenal compared to flying over this before. And as you can see, uh, the trees, of course, are going to not be that great because it's winter. But overall, I think it looks really good, and I'm really happy with the final results. So that concludes how you use it. Um, I think this is a pretty easy method, and given that there is no SDK options currently, this means that this is a really phenomenal way to do some standardized mapping. And I actually personally prefer this. Uh, I mean, then again, I did make it, right? 
Uh, but then I, again, I prefer this um, compared to really the only other option, which is just manually setting the points on the map um, where you, as you could just generate them. And that's awesome. So thank you very much for watching. If you're interested in giving us uh, like feedback tips, I'll include a Discord in the description. Um, if you're interested in checking out um, my upcoming RTK module, Universal Drone RTK module, that would be for like drones like the Mini 4. Um, that's also something you can find in the comments below. And uh, thanks very much for watching. Goodbye.